Hi, today we are with the, the DJI Ronin RS3 Mini. Yes, it's you. Uh, a very interesting gimbal for video stabilization since it is uh, lightweight, uh, powerful, has features, uh, very effective in uh, stabilization. And we will see, since there are a lot of uh, videos already on the web on uh, feature review of this type of gimbals, uh, uh, five accessories that can be useful to better leverage uh, this gimbal also to work around some uh, weakness uh, don't be sad for that uh, okay and uh, most of all we will see uh, the direct comparison between this model and the competition come on competition makes you stronger uh, in particular the Zhiyun Webill 3S and the Zhiyun Crane M3S that are lightweight competitors for 3-axis stabilization. So stay with me till the end. Let's go! This gimbal, the Mini, can support uh, up to 2 kilos uh, of camera and lens. Uh, this is a very good value. Uh, you can mount uh, a full-frame mirrorless camera with uh, a big lens, uh, like uh, in this case a 24 to 105 uh, millimeters f4 or a 24 to 70 millimeters f2.8 lens. Uh, this is an a7 III but also a mirrorless full frame uh, Canon or Nikon, uh, they are fully supported. But uh, uh, there are some special situations where uh, you can find some problems in balancing the camera. Why balancing? Because before using a gimbal you have to balance the three axes, so to put the center of gravity in the center, so that the, uh, the engines that uh, maintains the position for stabilization can work properly. And um, we will see a couple of situations where there can be some uh, problems in this balancing and how to overcome that. The first situation is uh, if you use a cage for your camera and if you use the cage the, the center of gravity uh, raises and so for balancing you should lower the horizontal arm and that can be a problem uh, since uh, you see that the length of the vertical arm is not that long uh, you are already at the extreme of the arm and so there are uh, three options to balance this type of setup with the cage the first is to uh, mount uh, the cage on a quick release plate from a small rig you can see here instead of using uh, the Arca Swiss mount uh, and this uh, and the um, quick release plate from the AGI so instead of these two on and on top of the cage you just put the cage on the small rig uh, uh, plate in that case you can save 15 millimeters and put the camera lower and so to balance also this setup uh, a second option is to replace the vertical arm with a small rig again a vertical arm that is uh, longer so that you can move the, the other arm lower or a third option is to replace the horizontal arm with a falcon uh, that's very interesting combination the, the, the horizontal arm from falcon with the quick release plate since the profile of the horizontal arm is different and you can uh, lower uh, again also in this case uh, the cage to balance it and also you have a very handy uh, quick release plate from the falcon Another situation is when you try to balance uh, a long focal length, uh, uh, length. For example, in this case, uh, if we put more than 70 and you want to uh, balance, uh, you have to uh, move back the, the camera uh, for proper balancing. And uh, the more you move uh, back the, the camera, uh, the less uh, you have uh, spare room uh, if you tilt the camera. Uh, without touching the this motor this motor is uh, used for uh, balancing the roll axis so if for example you, you need to mount uh, a mic receiver uh, uh, on the cold shoe and then you can have problems you see uh, uh, in tilting the camera uh, what to do in that case uh, there are two options the first is uh, not to mount uh, the mic uh, receiver on top of the camera but on a side uh, handle an additional handle and we will see it uh, a couple of options shortly 
Uh, and the second option is to use uh, the cage. If you mount the camera on a cage, the weight uh, uh, below the center of the gimbal is heavier and so you can move forward the camera with this position. In that case, also with the lens extended, there is more room also for mounting something on top of the cold shoe. That, these are, I think, uh, useful uh, uh, suggestions. And then let's go to the very interesting comparison between this model and the competition. And uh, if you put a like and subscribe to the channel, I would be very grateful for the support for the channel. Uh, so let's see. Uh, we are going to compare the Mini, the DJI Mini, with the, the Zhiyun WeBuild 3S and the Crane M3S that are the two direct competitors uh, since they are also lightweight. And we will also look at the DJI RS3, so the bigger brother of the Mini, and that it can be useful to see which features uh, are not present in the Mini, of course, for the purpose of being very light. So you can have a real uh, uh, whole view so that you can really judge what is the best gimbal for you. So, about the weight, uh, the weight of the Mini is uh, 850 grams, the WeBuild 3S is uh, about 200 grams more, so it's heavier, while the Crane is even lighter, about 150 grams less. Uh, being so light has some disadvantage in particular in terms of the, the max load that can be supported. In fact, it is two kilos in the Mini. It's a bit more than two kilos even in, in the WeBuild 3S. I mean that the WeBuild 3S is able to support a full frame reflex camera uh, of one kilos uh, with a 24 to 70 f2.8 lens. This combination is a bit more than two kilos and, and this combination is fully supported on the WeBuild 3S, while the Crane does not support 24 to 70 f2.8, the maximum is 24 to 70 f4, so less than 1.5 kilos, it's about 1.3 kilos. And so if you think of upgrading your camera to put a bigger lens, the crane is not a good option. The RS3 is another league of weight, is 1.3 kilos and of course can support even 3 kilos of camera and lens. The effectiveness of stabilization is very good with the Mini, with the WeBio. The crane is a bit less uh, uh, able to stabilize a very strong movement, while the RS3 is, is the best. The battery life is 10 hours, uh, the, the Mini 11 and a half uh, with the WeBuild and just 7.5 seven uh, with the Crane, uh, even uh, 12 uh, with the RS3. Uh, just a note, uh, because these battery life values uh, are measured by the producer and in easy to situation I mean that you fully charge the gimbal, you balance the camera and the lens and you leave them in a quiet position. Uh, if you move uh, the gimbal, if you use with uh, a lot of movements, uh, then the battery life is uh, shorter, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, the charge time is uh, between two hours and two hours and a half in all the models, <clears throat> and the batteries is swappable only in the RS3. Uh, that means that you can uh, replace the battery when the, the, the battery life is uh, no longer satisfactory after a lot of uh, charge recycles. About the side mount points, the RS3 Mini has a NATO, and it is not a military uh, Western organization. On the side, the NATO attachment uh, mount point is very useful to attach, for example, a handle, uh, an arm for a monitor or a mic. So it's very, really important for the flexibility. Unfortunately, the WeBuild does not have a side mount, while the Crane has a screw mount point. And the RS3 has even two NATO mounts, so one in each of the two sides. About the side handle, uh, you can buy the original DJI side handle, uh, made specifically for the RS3 Mini, uh, but I would suggest another option. So, this is uh, another suggestion. Uh, this is uh, a handle from uh, uh, the small rig again, and I th this model is a bit uh, uh, heavier than the original uh, of DJI. 
but it provides a lot of flexibility since it has uh, another NATO mount points here it has a lot uh, of screw mount points uh, here here uh, here uh, here here uh, it has an additional uh, cold shoe here and, and uh, here so a lot of flexibility in comparison with the DJI even if uh, this model is a bit heavier than the DJI the side handle is very useful in particular for some type of shooting and for example um, you can also uh, adjust uh, the tilt of this part of the handle if you shoot for example uh, with the, the camera uh, in the lower in the low position uh, okay or uh, it is useful also if you shoot uh, uh, with uh, uh, two hands okay in this uh, in this position for the wee bill you can buy an additional handle but it, it cannot be mounted on the side of the gimbal we have seen it before but it it, it is mounted uh, in on the bottom here between the tripod that uh, can be taken away here on the bottom you can add uh, the side handle i think the, uh, the the side handle mounted in this point is a bit more uh, flexible than the other solution. The crane uh, does not provide a sign handle while the DJR has uh, more than one option for uh, additional accessories and, and handles. The video transmission is supported uh, just uh, by the Webill uh, that also supports the remote control uh, together with the video transmissions uh, and by the RS3, the bigger brother. Uh, I mean that with an app, uh, with a single app, you can uh, both uh, see uh, live view what the camera is seeing and uh, control uh, the, the movement uh, of the gimbal and also to track the subject that you are uh, shooting at. Uh, this is not possible with the Mini. Uh, the Mini has a very interesting app uh, with which you can tune all the parameters uh, of, the, of the gimbal. Uh, you can also program time lapses, uh, you can move the, the gimbal, uh, you can program a, a track uh, of the, um, for shooting, but you cannot see live view uh, at the same time on the app. Uh, and you cannot track a subject uh, automatically that, that is called active tracking that is supported just with the bigger brother rs3 the focus and zoom uh, remote mechanical control means that you can uh, buy an additional device to put here on the side of the lens uh, with a wheel that will remotely move uh, the zoom and the focus ring and that is uh, for additional remote control and that is supported only on the uh, RS3 Big Brother. Uh, the vertical shooting is supported uh, on uh, all the models but, but uh, with the Mini you have just to uh, release uh, the plate uh, here and mount uh, on the vertical arm here and you can shoot uh, for example a TikTok video. In the WeBuild there is a similar way of mounting uh, vertically while the crane is really a, an awkward uh, solution uh, since uh, the, the vertical shooting uh, uh, is said to be supported but actually uh, it is not very much in the sense that they uh, say that uh, the vertical shooting is made uh, in this position so you put uh, the gimbal in a horizontal position and you should shoot uh, in this uh, situation i mean this is very uncomfortable for for a long time while DJI RS3 need an additional mount for uh, uh, vertical shooting. The balancing is not that uh, fast on the Mini and uh, on the Crane, while the Webill is a bit uh, faster. Also a lens uh, stand is provided for long lengths. Uh, in the RS3 there is also a screw that uh, really helps uh, in fine-tuning the balancing, since you have to really move the position of the camera on the axis carefully, because just moving one millimeter can be too much. Okay. The screen for controlling the operations are a color touch screen in the Mini, uh, in the Crane and in the RS3, uh, while the Webill has uh, no touch screen and, and no color screen. The Webill provides also a light, uh, that, a light that is uh, in this position. It's a small light that can be useful in uh, an emergency situation when it is dark, for example, and you cannot uh, 
uh, or you're not able to, to have uh, some uh, proper lighting, maybe because you are alone in the, in the shooting. Color fidelity uh, of the light is not the best. The CRI, that is the color rendering index, is uh, 90, that is not that much. But if you have no light, uh, for sure, is, uh, can be a useful addition. Uh, it's a LED light. The RS3 also provides uh, uh, automatic uh, axis lock, that means that when you have to put away uh, your gimbal in, in your backpack, uh, you have to lock all the axis, uh, and in all the light models uh, you have to lock uh, each uh, axis uh, individually, while the RS3, the bigger one, uh, has a mechanism that in one uh, click you can uh, lock all the axis. I mean, yes, good, but I think it's not that important. And finally, the price. Uh, the, the Mini is uh, 389 euros, the Webill is about 50 euros less and the Crane is uh, um, 20 euros less than the Webill. Uh, the RS3 is in another uh, range of price and 559 euros. So, just to conclude, what is the best uh, gimbal for uh, traveling? I think that the Crane uh, is interesting, but uh, I would skip that model since uh, the maximum load is not that much. So either you are sure that you will never uh, need to mount uh, a bigger camera or a bigger lens, uh, I think it's uh, not the best model. So we are left with the Mini, the DJI Mini and the Webill. They are both very, very good uh, gimbals and lightweight. If the weight, if the most important feature, then the Mini is the best option. So you can save uh, 200 uh, grams. While if you really need uh, uh, the advanced uh, remote uh, capabilities for controlling the gimbals, then the Webill is uh, the best option. So it, it really depends uh, on uh, the value of weight uh, versus uh, the remote control, advanced remote control, because the, the DJI uh, also provides with the app uh, uh, remote control. So just if you need both uh, live view and remote control combining together with active tracking. And that's it for today, I hope this video uh, has been useful for you and now you, you can make the choice for the best uh, travel uh, gimbal for stabilization of your videos. Again, if you can subscribe and put a like, uh, I'm very happy and see you soon. Bye!